It is a presentation Christian Rios has given dozens of times over the past year. A pitch from a young entrepreneur with a company and an idea aimed at saving lives. Christian, a 16-year-old sophomore at the Met School in Providence, is co-owner of a business called Wear Aspirin. Its goal is for people to have aspirin with them and readily available if someone nearby is having a heart attack. Last week, he gave his final school presentation, one that has been worked and reworked over the past year to his fellow students at the Met. But this is an idea Christian wants to sell to the world. The key message we're sending to people is you're not wearing it for yourself. You're wearing it to save someone else's life. Each year, one and a half million Americans have a heart attack. One third of them will die. The statistics are sobering, laid out in a two minute video. Did you know any of this or was this all kind of new to you? I had no idea. Um, there's a lot about aspirin that would surprise people. Every single time I went out and presented and asked people, do you have aspirin on you? They would always say, no, I have it at my desk, I have it at home. And if, if they did have it by a mirac by some chance, if they did have it, they would have it in an inconspicuous place and they probably wouldn't know that it helps a heart attack victim. It was an idea that I had walked around with for quite literally decades. Nick Condon, uh, who spent a career starting technology companies, is one of Christian's mentors and now his business partner. As a volunteer at the Met, he spotted a then 15-year-old who was intelligent and savvy beyond his years. Nick recalls one of their first conversations. I was thinking that you'd be my partner and that you'd own about 7% of the company. And Christian, without, without any pause, said to me, I'm young, but I'm not stupid. Three days later, he said, hey, would you want to run this company? And I was like, sure, why not? We're equal partners in this, in, in this endeavor. And equal partners means equal throw weight. He has opinions. He has strong opinions, and it wasn't me saying, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do it this way because I'm old and we've done it this way before. Before the partnership was struck, Nick had given Christian an assignment. I want a small container that can hold a .4175 inches of a pill, right? And it has to be small enough to be discreet, but big enough to be noticeable so that people ask about it. And it has to hold one pill, and it has to be configured to fit in five different places. But who actually has aspirin on them? Almost nobody. Early prototypes included a wristwatch attachment, a magnet, and a ring, all of which were eventually discarded. Christian will tell you that he, he can show you 28 ways not to make a wear aspirin container, and we've tried some. After some trial and error, they arrived on five different wear aspirin containers, a key ring, a cell phone, a hat, a lapel pin, and a charm attachment for a bracelet. And so it's easy to get to. Easy to get to. Somebody's having a heart attack. You notice, you pop it out, you administer it to them, you tell them to chew it, then they swallow. And what do the stats show about aspirin? So the stats show that if you administer a 325 milligram aspirin to a victim, it reduces 80% of the platelets heading to the clot in the bloodstream and increases their chances of surviving by 30%. That's the medical part. But at the end of the day, this is a business, which is what students in the eVentures class discover. Christian and other students at the Met Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship are learning that a good idea also needs a good business plan. We want people to have something with weight, something that they'll be proud to wear, proud to show off, um, something that will catch someone's eye and say, hey, what is that? and then they'll say it's a wear aspirin. The proposed retail price for all five, including aspirin, $17.95. But Christian isn't doing this alone. He has a growing team of volunteers, from mentors and manufacturers to world-class product designers. They all believe in this idea. Over the past year, he has enlisted the help of a variety of people, and earlier this spring decided to try crowdfunding for the initial startup costs on the website Indiegogo. There, he has a separate video talking about who has helped him and asking for contributions to get the company off the ground. The original amount, $44,000, which proved to be too ambitious. 
they have scaled it back to 12,000 and so far have raised about a third. The plan was to go on a crowdfunding site and raise enough capital for us to make this in the USA and um, market it in Rhode Island so that it starts as a Rhode Island company and then we branch out into um, the American Heart Association, the American Medical Association, and just national organizations and start programs with them. But right now, we think our demographics are women over the age of 40. Um, you know, because if a woman buys this, the woman is buying this for her husband or her kids or her um, friends and family. And that may be why going the crowdfunding route for seed money has not produced the results they had originally hoped for. So here's a young guy who goes on and says, I have an initiative, it's cheap, it's smart, it's simple, we'll save lives. Uh, what you need to do is donate. The conversion rate is just appalling. We can't figure it out. Appallingly small. <clears throat> Appallingly small. Did that surprise you? Stunned us. But why do you think it's small? The medium attracts younger people. And they're at the, I'm never going to have a heart attack stage. What is this about? It's an interesting right, idea. Heart attacks are for your grandfather. Heart attack, yeah. Isn't that part of the learning process for a business, though? Yeah, it is. As far as I'm concerned, it's the, almost the best litmus test you can have. So they're going to revise the plan, as partners often have to do in any business. Christian says while operating a successful company that makes money is an incentive to succeed, there's another side to his motivation. It became personal with me. Um, a long time ago, my mother told me that most people in my family die from heart attacks. Um, it's in our genes, um, but genes affect a small percentage of the chances that you'll have a heart attack. It's also eating habits and things like that. But the, my chances of having a small heart attack one day will are, have increased because of my genes. Um, from both sides of my family, mother and father, most people die from heart attacks. So it's become personal. And remember, you won't be wearing aspirin for yourself. You'll be wearing it to save someone else's life. How's that going to make you feel? In Providence, Jim Hummel, for the Rhode Island Spotlight.